The Universe is a Hymn. Spiritualists Tarun and Celia Cherian present three ways it can enrich your life. My mother loves singing. She'd start the day with mourning his broken. So it is not surprising that now that she has passed away, that she has collected around herself a choir, a cosmic choir. And the other day I was talking to her. She told me something very beautiful. And she said, the universe is a hymn. Now we have often heard it said, and we ourselves have put out a video which says, the universe is a vibration, which means that we do not have to treat it like an object. Of course it is an object. If I hit myself on uh, the table on which this camera is placed on, it will hurt me. But then there are freedoms that we can use. So for example, if I keep seeing that the universe is a hymn and I allow myself to sense it and allow myself to respond to that hymn, then there may come a point in time when the very way that I interact with the world changes and changes utterly and completely to such an extent that I may be even able to manipulate matter. We've spoken in Buffy's Doggy Revelations of how at times Buffy was in two places at the same time. The universe is a hymn with living notes in a living hymn. And like in all hymns and all choirs, there may be a main theme going, but there will be counter themes. And so sometimes those who are not listening to the main theme too are part of the theme, are part of the symphony. And this is a huge point. Now we share a secret to welcome joy. But the second thing that she has just told me today morning was to be conscious of the song or the hymn that our lives make. So for example, she was uh, listening in through my ears to the neighborhood. And there's a worker in an adjoining building who's begun uh, with the construction and he was hammering with a particular rhythm. Tuck, 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 tuck. And from that she turned around and said, this opens up the mind to a song. La 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 And then she turned around and said that each of us has a broad tune that our life is part of, which several great forces have inspired. Obviously, one is our soul. The second is what we call the Shaktis or the forces that help create this world and this universe. Now, for most of us, this particular hymn or song stays for more, virtually all of our lives. It usually starts developing from the age of about five and goes on till about 60, 65. Now, you will ask yourself, how does it help if I become conscious of the song of my life? Well, if you can become conscious of the song of your life, then it gives you great depth, it gives you great continuity, and it gives you great richness. Now, you may ask, uh, how do I get to the song of my life? Well, the simple answer is to listen. Yes, listen. 
to many facets, listen at many levels. Now we can apply the same principle to enrich relationships. For as we are listening, we also begin to see the pattern of relationships around us and to hear what it feels like. Same way as we listen to ourselves, we can listen to our relationships too. So for example, right now, there's a bird chirping away merrily and happily. So if I touch that, I get a sense of how I respond to the natural world. So when I'm touching it at a higher level, it's very bright and very responsive. When I go down, it's almost non-existent. Now I'm listening again to a man hammering away in the distance. As I listen to the worker or listen to the relationship between me and workers in general, I find that the lowest levels are very heavy and dense. Uh, indicating that I find it perhaps difficult to command them or to understand how much to ask of them. The mid-level is clear and strong, which indicates that uh, I treat it like a contract or a relationship of equals. But when I go to the higher spiritual level, there's a dip and then suddenly there's a place of great strength and interaction. So it means that I cannot get across spiritually with words, but I can with spiritual action. Healing with the cosmic hymn. So she offers us a kind of a meditation or a prayer, uh, or rather what she calls a kind of a alignment or synchrony, which will help us. So she says all that we need to do is put our hands out a little like this, as if we are willing to receive a greater power. And as we hold our hands out, we begin to make a humming noise like As we're making that so sound, the bass sound is a Ma, na, na, ga sound. So, but within that sound, there are other sounds which are being mixed in. So, for example, there's an underlying a oo sound being pulled in, an e sound being pulled in. An I sound being pulled in, a U sound being pulled in. Now, you're doing this in a very intuitive fashion, not in a fixed fashion. So it's a mantra that is a mantra of the bones, a mantra of the universe. So you're going something like. So it starts with us just making sounds with the mouth and there comes a point in time when we slowly start synchronizing with the sound that the universe makes. The sound the universe makes is obviously not a sound that our lips can see. It's like more like thunder or the stretching of space or the groaning of time. But there comes a point in time where now and again we will be in synchrony and synergy with it. After a few months or maybe a few years of this, we can then put our hands beneath situations in life. So for example, it doesn't have to be only personal, it can be even uh, mega situations. So let's apply this to planet change. Now as we listen to the sound that 
man and nature is currently making it goes something like this. Now, that relationship is only going to end in utter disaster for ourselves. So, a simple thing would be is to let our hands feel this rough, almost barbed wire relationship and change it with a certain to turn it into human words Help us, Lord, help us Find harmony Help us, Lord, help us Find harmony Thank you for listening, subscribing to our channel and visiting creatorschild.com